I want to talk about Davis's law today. Essentially, what Davis's law states is that our body adapts to the imposed strain demands and encounters. Davis's law is specific to soft tissue, while Hooke's law might be something you've heard relative to bones. So when we talk about Davis's law, we're talking about the body adapting um, in the direction in which these imposed demands are. We can think about them as strain lines and specifically our soft tissue. So tendons, ligaments, muscles, and fascia. The reason why this is important is because it is the, hint, the linchpin of that of uh, specific adaptations to imposed demands. In other words, doing things like hops, skips, and jumps, and you know, impact type movements have a unique form of strain that is well unique to that specific stimulus. It's very different than that of a hang clean, a power lift, like a squat, and other movements. Taking this into consideration, we might be able to then think about sport-specific adaptations, not just in terms of am I working the right muscles, but am I working the right muscles through the specific demands that are related to that of sport? Because in doing so, and we had the proper overload in that direction, then according to Davis's law, we'll be laying down the foundation, the adaptive foundation and soft tissue reformation and modeling that reflects that which occurs in sport and in turn might lead to better transfer onto the sporting field itself. Now, the very simple surmised version of this is do things that kind of happen in sport itself or specific exercises or special exercises that overload the tissues, the target tissue that you're trying to adapt in a means that is relative or, or similar to that of the sporting demands. So an example would be the difference between a depth jump and that of a max effort back squat. A max effort back squat and a depth jump might be working the same musculature. They might both place large demands on the knee extensors. However, the depth jumps occurs in a specific joint angle with a large amount of stretch and momentum and specifically large velocity of stretch, while the back squat occurs a large time under tension, not as much velocity of stretch, and again, maybe a deeper range of motion. Looking at this, we can then specifically, or I guess theoretically, believe and think about uh, how Davis's law applies here and how that the adaptations of a depth jump are going to be very different over the specific strain lines and remodeling that might occur than that of a back squat. Now, it's not saying don't back squat or only do depth jumps, but it might help you understand why we see specific outcomes in athletes that don't squat and yet have amazing athletic performance because something else could be happening at the soft tissue level that isn't just specific to the contractile musculature apparatus that is the, uh, the muscle, but could be also in connection with the soft tissue remodeling that of tendons, fascia, and even um, structural proteins within the muscle itself. So Davis's law is something that we're talking about uh, we should consider at least and, and keep in mind when it comes to selecting specific exercises as it is obviously playing a factor in the remodeling process in which the tissue realigns itself and potentially help us understand how we should, at, at least at a minimum, not only uh, mix in sport-specific activities but activities that overload the tissues in a sport-specific or special capacity way.